Okay, welcome to the last section of video notes before your chapter 5 test. There will be two sections of notes after the test, but this is the last notes that are on your test. Today is day 13 and we are covering vertical motion. You will notice that unlike the other videos, today's video requires a calculator. You will not be able to get through vertical motion without a calculator. So please make sure you have your calculator out. Um, today's objective is to solve quadratic equations using vertical motion. So the first thing that you will notice is that the first example takes up the entire page. It has parts A through E. Normally when we see word problems, we just want to quit. We think it's too difficult. You've learned all of this stuff. We're now just putting it into practice. So it's extremely important that we read each question carefully and think about it. Don't just jump to conclusions or guess, but think about what we're doing. The vertical motion uh, problems take into account everything that we've learned in the chapter. So you're going to have to use maximums, you're going to have to use zeros, you're going to have to use solving um, in order to answer each part. So first thing we should probably talk about is what is the vertical motion equation. The equation is h of t equals negative 16t squared add v of t add h of 0. Okay, so this v is the initial velocity Sometimes the problem will say velocity, sometimes it'll say initial velocity, but either way, if you have a velocity of some type, it goes for v. h of 0 is the initial or starting height. So these are the two that you're always going to substitute in for. In every problem, you're going to be given a velocity and a starting height. And then t always stays there, and t, as you can probably guess, just stands for time. So five seconds, two minutes, three days, etc. H of t is also always going to stay there. H of, H of t is the height after a certain time. So the height after two minutes, the height after three days. So the ones you are always going to substitute for are v and h of zero. And then everything else stays the same. So let's look at our first example. It says an object is fired straight up from the top of a 150-foot tower at a velocity of 75 feet per second. Part A, write the vertical motion model to reflect the information above. Okay, well, I already told you h of t stays there. And then I have negative 16t squared add. Now I've reached the first point where I need to substitute. V is the velocity. Okay, well, it says I have a velocity of 75 feet per second. So I'm going to add 75t plus, and then h of 0 is the initial height. Well, it says it's fired straight up from the top of a 150-foot tower. So that means our object starts 150 feet above the ground. So plus 150. So that's part A. Not too bad. B, use the model to predict the height of the object after three seconds. Okay, three seconds. That's going to be a t. That's going to be a time. So now we're going to use our model. We want to find the height after three seconds. So we want to find h of three. So I'm going to substitute in three for t. This becomes negative 16 times three squared. Add 75 multiplied by three. Add 150. When I do this in my calculator, I get... 231, and then this is going to be feet. So I'm just going to write a little sentence so that I know what this means. After three seconds, the object is 231 feet above the ground. Okay, which should make sense. It started at 150 feet, and then it's increased into 231 feet. Something to notice about our vertical uh, motion model in part A is that we have this negative 16 t squared. So that means our parabola is opening down. So we're going to be looking at something like this, which should make sense. You're shooting up an object, it's increasing, but then eventually it has to come back down again. Like if you were to take and throw a soccer ball in the air, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rise, but eventually it's going to fa fall back down to the ground. So we're going to need to use that fact uh, in a few minutes. Okay, moving to part C. 
At what time will the object be 235 feet off the ground? So this is our h of t this time. So we have 235 equals negative 16t squared, add 75t, add 150. Okay, so this is solving a quadratic. So the first thing that I have to do is get my quadratic set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 235. I get zero equals negative 16t squared, add 75t, and then 150 subtract 235 is negative 85. And now I'm ready to go to the calculator. So if you would please take out your calculator. Okay, you should have your calculator out at this point. First thing that you need to do is go to y equals and put in this equation, please. So the negative 16 x squared plus 75 x minus 85. I know that our equation has t, but we're just going to use x. Okay, now I need to think. Well, let me look at the graph first. So hit zoom 6, and this is the graph that you should have. And now I need to think logically, what do I need to do in order to find this answer? Well, I have my equation set equal to zero, so I need to find the two zeros. And as you will notice on the graph, there should be two zeros. So we're going to hit second, calc, and we're going to calculate a zero. Okay, so first thing is the left bound. So scroll all the way over until your cursor is near the zero. Okay, so hit left now, and then below the axis is the left bound. When you hit right, it goes up, so above the axis is the right bound. And then guess, yes, you want to hit enter again. Okay, so the first solution that I get is 1.92 seconds. And then let's find the second one. I'm going to do the same thing, second calc. I want my other zero. Okay, so go near the point, and now hit left. Point goes up. That means the left bound is above. When I hit right, the point goes down, so the right bound is below. So the next zero ends up being 2.77. Okay, so there are two times when the object is 235 feet off the ground, after 1.92 seconds, and then again after 2.77 seconds. So part C also asks, why are there two positive answers? Well, if we look back at the picture that I drew before, we see that the object rises and then it decreases. So it rises and then it falls. So let's say that 235 feet is somewhere here. That means the object hits 235 feet on its way up when it's rising, and then also when it's falling. So that's why there's two positive answers. So the object is at 235 feet twice. Once when it is rising, and once when it is falling. Okay, so that was part C. That's not, not, that's not anything new. We're just putting a new twist to it. So now let's move and look at part D. Part D says, what is the maximum height the object reaches? And then how long does it take for the object to reach its ma maximum height? Okay, well, the problem gave us a hint. Maximum, maximum. So we probably have to calculate the maximum. So again, let's look at our equation. We have h of t equals negative 16t squared add 75t, add 150. Okay, so first thing is we need to make sure that that's the equation that we have in y equals. So go to your y equals, please. When you do that, you will notice that we have our equation in there from part c, which is not the correct equation. So we have to make sure we change that negative 85 to a positive 150. And now hit zoom 6 like you normally would. And this is what you should be looking at. So we need to find the maximum height. Well, we can't even see the maximum right now. So we probably want to do something so that we can see that maximum. So this time hit zoom. And I haven't shown you this before. Uh, maybe your teacher has. But if you go down to zero, it's zoom fit. And then hit enter. Okay, so zoom fit is going to 
uh, narrow in on the window that it, the calculator thinks you want to look at. So the calculator thinks that we want to look at the maximum, which is correct. So this is perfect. We're looking at the maximum. Now if you remember, hit second calc. We want to calculate the maximum. We're going to be asked for a left bound. So that just means go to the left of somewhere of where the maximum is and hit enter. And then right means right bound means go to the right of where the maximum is. So I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Now I'm to the right, I can hit enter. And I can hit enter one more time. And there is my maximum. So the point that we get is 2.34 comma 237.89. Okay, so the question specifically asks, what is the maximum height the object reaches? So the maximum height, and then how long does it reach? So the time. Okay, well, we know that our equations or our points are t comma h. So the time that it's going to take is 2.34 seconds. And the maximum height that it's going to reach is 237.89 feet. So after 2.34 seconds, the object reaches a maximum height of 237.89 feet. Again, that's something that we've done all the way from day one is finding a maximum. And then last part is part E. How long does it take for the object to fall back to the ground? So this is probably the trickiest one. Okay, fall back to the ground. That's telling us that our height is zero. So if the object is on the ground, that means it's at a height of zero. So that means I'm going to set my original equation equal to zero. Okay, so go back to your y equals and make sure that this is the equation that you have put in y equals, please. It's a pretty common mistake for people to have the wrong equation put in and then to find the wrong answer. And I can't follow your work if you have the wrong equation. So we'll notice we have the correct equation. So hit zoom six. Okay, we're going to notice that we have two zeros right now. We have this zero here, and we have this zero here. Now the zero on the left is a negative. That doesn't really make sense in terms of time. So we're going to be finding that zero on the right, which does make sense. Hopefully we remember that you're going to hit second calc, and then we want to calculate the zero. Okay, now hit your left cursor until or your left arrow until the cursor gets all the way over to our point. Now I notice that I passed the point. That's because I'm at x equals 8. So I must have passed it, which is why I'm backtracking to the left. So I can see my y is getting smaller, negative 112. I want it to be near 0. Okay, so there we go. That's my left bound. Now when I hit right, Cursor goes down. It's at negative 23. I just can't see it. So that is my zero. So my zero is 6.12 seconds. So after 6.12 seconds, the object is going to fall back to the ground. I just want to look real quick at what I did at the end so we can see that again. Okay, so again, I realized I went too far, so I'm hitting to the left, to the left, to the left. Okay, so the left bound is above. That's because when I'm hitting left, it's going up. So I'm going to hit enter. Now when I hit right, the cursor disappears. That's because y is at negative 23. So sometimes you're not going to be able to see the cursor. It's going to disappear out of your window. But I still know that I'm below the axis, which is why I hit enter again. Um, and th again, this is something we've done. We've calculated zeros. We did it in part C. Um, we did it last week. We did it before break. So that's vertical motion. Um, if you have any questions with what we did in this video, uh, please make sure that you bring them to class tomorrow.